We are here at Paolo Scavino in Castiglione Filetto at the base of the hill. Uh, we're going to meet with Elisa Scavino, who is the granddaughter of Paolo. Her father, Enrico, is the current uh, winery manager. Uh, we're hoping to taste some of their great Barolos. Uh, they, they do a lot of uh, really nice bottles and uh, get a little tour of the winery. So let's go take a look. Our third day of winery visits takes us to two very different but very exciting wineries. The first being a beautiful property where family is central to the business. Palo Scavino is a family-run third-generation winery. You can tell they commit themselves to making good wine. New Slavonian oak casts have just been delivered, which is pretty cool because I've never actually seen a delivery like this before. These casks will replace some of their oldest, most used casks for future vintages. Their barrel room is a long line of barrel after barrel. You get a good sense of the volume they produce every year, just by stepping into this one room. As we continue through the winery, Elisa shares some stories with us about her father's own wine innovations. Enrico Scavino is clearly a thinker. He's thought about the fermentation process and some years ago decided the fermentation vats available to him just weren't doing what he wanted them to. He came up with the idea for horizontal tanks that rotate the juice more consistently, allowing for greater skin contact. It's clear that winemaking isn't just a job to him, but a livelihood and a passion. One of the coolest things about Scavino is their wine library, that is, their collection of older vintages. We haven't encountered a wine library quite so complete and organized as this one. Elisa carefully handles each bottle so she doesn't disturb the sediment. The bottles go back 40 or 50 years to the original labels her grandfather used when he started the business. Elisa told us that they had recently opened a bottle from the 70s and it was still drinking well. What a great way to see how well Barolos hold up for many, many years. It's exciting to walk through their wine cellar and think about how one day the current releases will be like those old Barolos from the 70s. After the full tour of the winery, we head back through a beautiful inner courtyard to the tasting room to experience the incredible wine the Scavinos produce. The docile yellow lab keeps us company while we taste the wine. They have a lot of single vineyard Barolos that we tasted side by side which is an excellent way to see how even though the wine is made from the same grape in the same winery, each vineyard has its own unique characteristics. My personal favorite was their Brick del Fiasque, which is the best of both worlds, power and elegance. Connecting all the wineries throughout Piedmont are the rolling hillsides, completely covered in vineyards. You can't escape that no matter where you go in this region. It's a constant that follows you from village to village. As technology and tradition evolve, however, so do the wineries, and it's becoming more and more common to see grand feats of architecture breaking up the vineyards throughout Piedmont. We're here in the Barola region of Piedmont at Domenico Clerico, brand new winery facility just completed last year. We're going to meet up with Luciano, who's the winemaker here, and we're going to taste the, the new vintage of the Domenico Clerico wines, as well as hopefully uh, the new wines from his own project, Rainieri, that he started with a couple friends. So let's go on and see what they have for us. This facility was completed in 2011, and it's incredible to see. From the tasting room, you look through a wall of windows, and if you can keep looking past the swimming pool, you'll see the vines and grapes that surround the entire property. We start this visit with the tasting, and listen to Luciano explain his philosophy of wine making and vine growing. He really likes to interact with the wine and evolve his style as needed to let the wine show best. This means that while Clerico wines can be very traditional, he's not afraid to employ more modern techniques such as aging in small barrels in order to extract more flavor from the wine if necessary. The highlight was definitely the 2004 Clerico per Cristina, which was still young, but showed enough character to let me know that this wine is going to evolve into something truly special. As I mentioned, we taste through both the Clerico wines as well as a new project Luciano is working on called Rainieri. These wines are definitely more modern and have allowed Luciano to experiment even more in order to learn new ways to make an old wine even better. 